right, at the end of the session, this is Akira, and this is Akira's roadmap to success. You see where she's a smarty pants. She's going right where the treats are. How about we sit down so they can see what a good looking girl you are. That's Akira. Okay, so um, uh, basically uh, Akira is one of her main things is she whines and whimpers that her guardians wanted to work on. And I think part of the reason that she does that is because she's a little bit anxious. She's confused as to her, sta uh, her status or her position in the house. And I think that she, uh, and it works, I think more than anything else. And so basically, um, I would like you to imagine what, it, what kind of a worker you would be if you had a boss who said, okay, yeah, there's no rules for you. Uh, whenever you feel like getting paid, you let me know, I'll cut you a check, no questions asked. And there's no consequences. So if you don't show up at work, no big deal, because you're gonna be more responsible if you're res uh, a better employee if you're responsible for yourself. You're probably gonna be, love your job, and you're probably gonna be the worst employee that, that company has ever had, because you don't have any motivation to listen to your boss or do the job because you get paid regardless. And that's kind of something a lot of my clients uh, have for the dog, including Akira. So basically, um, she, uh, oh, well, the first thing we did was we talked about exercise. She, because she can kind of bully her way out of part of the yard, she really doesn't get around, around the yard very much. Her guardians have a uh, young child, and so they don't have the ability to walk her the way that they like because she's uh, at lack of impulse control. She lunges at people and dogs that she wants to meet, and it's hard to do when you're in a stroller. And so the more that they don't walk her and don't let her run around the yard, the more kind of, uh, concentrated we're making her energy and so eventually it's gonna just like any other pressure vessel it's gonna come out and I think for her it's created some frustration it's causing her to bark at the neighbors and the fence back there or over there or out the window in the front and so one of the first things we talked about was exercise your average dog needs an hour's worth of exercise a day higher energy dogs or working dogs or herding dogs typically need more than that but they also sleep a lot a dog of Kira size probably sleeping about 14 to 16 17 hours a day when she's asleep she's recharging her batteries now about 100%, let's go run it out. But I don't have an outlet to burn that energy. So uh, we talked about some creative forms of exercise, the Doggy Stairmaster. And I'm gonna go through this one, I'm just gonna name the other ones, but message me, uh, I, for, I have videos if you don't know how to do any of the other ones. So the Doggy Stairmaster is basically, uh, I show, and always all exercise should be done with an empty stomach. So I show her that I have a treat while I'm at the top of the stairs. When she's looking at me, I throw the treat to the bottom of the stairs. When she goes down and licks up the treat, I come up with a fun word that means go down south. Let's say Cabo. So the treat goes in the mouth first, then she hears the command word second. So I throw the treat, she runs down and looks up, I say Cabo. Then I show her I have another treat, she runs the top of the stairs, and I call this one North Pole because we have a little kid in the house. So I put the treat in the mouth and say North Pole, then I show her another one and throw it down the stairs. I keep doing this in an empty stomach the first time, and, well, always an empty stomach, but the first time I do it when she's hungry, and I keep doing this until she says, you're crazy, I've been down there 87 times, I'm not going down there anymore. Now we know what her maximum number is for this activity, and that's important to know. Most people never know what the dog's maximum number is. So once we know the maximum number, we want to exercise her about 50 to 75% of that maximum number multiple times a day. When she's naughty, she needs some exercise. Ask yourself, how long has it been since she's exercised? If it's been longer than an hour, get her some doggy Stairmaster. Um, if she is barky, how long has it been she's been exercised? If she's charging the fence and so on. Um, so the idea with the exercise is to set her up for success. And so um, if they're gonna have uh, a lot of kids walking by the house, if we ever get done with Corona, well, then maybe if kids come by at 3.15, maybe at 3 o'clock we take her to the stairs and do the doggy Stairmaster. Maybe before the kids come home we, uh, or walking by, we need to do the doggy Stairmaster 15 times. Maybe before a guest comes in the house, it needs to be 28 times. Before a walk, maybe we need to do 30 times or so on. So you're playing around with the quantities, and then you're trying another activity or have a visitor or whatever it is, and then judge her overall behavior and see how well she did. Did she perform better or worse? So if she performed better, but it's not perfect that we maybe add an extra five up downs and the stairs or whatever it is until we get to the point where her behavior is perfect and so we've set her up for success and remember it could vary um, the activity might determine might need different amounts of exercise based on the level of intensity um, all right i'm gonna come over here i think i'm gonna reward her with some passive training if she does um passive training uh, well we'll talk about it in a sec um, all right, so basically um, uh, that's one of the forms of exercise. So uh, you want to exercise about 50 to 75% of, of that maximum number multiple times a day. Come, that's passive training and the little free shape, and we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so the next uh, one that we talked about was uh, the doggy uh, uh, using uh, her nose, scent games. And so you can just Google scent games. There's a lot of uh, articles and stuff, uh, videos out there on how to do it. But really what it is is hiding treats around, and every time she looks it up, maybe you say booty or treasure or whatever the word is and again remember try to use fun command words for all new commands so every time she looks up we say booty 
And so now she's got to use her nose to find these treats that's draining, stimulating, and relaxing for the dog, and it gives her something to do. So that's another way, maybe hiding five or 10 treats around the house. Um, see an optical illusion with the dog right now. Um, so another thing you can do is feeding her out of treat dispensing toys, like a snuffle mat, that's a video I showed you, or the Omega Paw Treat Ball, that's uh, the biggest one, it's about 17 to 18 bucks. So you feed her out her food out of those things and that helps her, uh, it's stimulating, it's also making her work for her food with boosters, boosters self-esteem and confidence, it also drains energy. So feeding out of the treat dispensing toys is almost like a walk. So um, uh, let me see, we also can play fetch. Now when you're playing fetch, remember as you throw the ball, you say fetch. When she picks the object up, you say fetch. And then when she, when she comes over to you, hold the treat out, don't say anything, wait for her to drop the object. When she does, pop the treat in her mouth, say fetch, and then step on the ball. Um, and don't ever snatch the ball. Step on it and then tell her to sit. When she sits, I very casually reach down to pick up the ball. If I reach to snatch it, then that's implied that I don't think I can get it. So if, you, if you're the leader, you don't have to, it's a snatch. And then I pick it up and she gets up, I tell her to sit. If she doesn't sit, I don't throw the ball. I might lower it. If she barks at me, man, I am not gonna even look at you when you're barking. Because that's rewarding. Remember, good attention and bad attention from us is pretty much the same thing when it comes to dogs. And anything a dog is doing when you pet it or reward it or give it attention is what you're rewarding. So if she barks at me and I throw the ball, then barking is her way of getting me to throw the ball. What I wanna do instead is build in a little bit of uh, obedience and respect for the human and, and practice listening to the human. So the dog has to sit. Only after you drop the ball and then sit do I pick up the ball. And if you get up, I won't throw it until you sit a second time. She can stay seated, that's fine. Uh, so then, now fetch. Count the number of maximum fetches. We had one dog that was a border collie uh, in our puppy class. It had needed 193 fetches before it actually laid down. But nobody would ever actually fetch that amount. But once the guardian knew how much that was, then she could factor in appropriate fetches 41 fetches I, or 191 or whatever it was was I think like 40 minutes but uh, eventually you figure out the different amount of fetches that she needs or whatever it is so I'd like you to get a combination going of maybe three or four up down uh, doggy stairmasters one or two scent games uh, throughout the day um, feeding out of the treat dispensing toys going for a walk and a game of fetch we can do those things because they're very short little activities. We can multiple, get those in every two to four hours. Or if somebody's gonna come over, we're just, we do something to set her up for success. She, exercise is gonna be a real big thing for her. So make sure before doing the exercise and the, uh, the activities that I have in the videos above that you're exercising her first. But after the exercise, she needs at least 10 minutes to recover and catch her breath before the next thing happens. And don't count getting in the car as the, uh, for that 10 minutes recovery time because she won't she doesn't like being in the car to be honest, she gets whining and anxious. But if she's driving somewhere, she's not gonna be calming herself down. I should have drank before I started this. Um, okay, so that's exercise, which is gonna either make it easier for you to fix the problems you have, or it's gonna amplify the problems you have. So make sure you're exercising or set her up for success. We also talked about rules. Uh, for rules, um, dogs go through life probing to see where the boundary of the limit is. The leaders are the ones who enforce it, and in enforcing a boundary consistently is how dogs learn. So in the video, one of the videos above is how to teach the dog to stay behind an invisible boundary. So practice that exercise and follow the instructions in there. Set up a scenario session where you can have your son eating a snack over there and she has to stay away from it. Uh, then he's on the couch the next meal and so on and so forth. And you guys practice having her stay away from the dining room table or wherever you eat, as well as not being allowed in the kitchen. There's a video on my website you can uh, search for. Well, I mean, it shows the same thing I showed you. But, um, so you can search for invisible or kitchen and show you those video, a different version of those videos. Uh, remember to always throw the treat out, like I talked about in the video, though. We always want her to be able to do the thing that we want on her own without having to escort her out. Um, let me see. So um, those are some examples of rules. The last rule I suggest is that she has to sit at the door, and this is what's called a pre-mac, which means a less desirable behavior leads to a more desirable behavior. If you want to go outside, sit at the door. If you don't sit within, I say sit once, yeah, the dog has three seconds to sit. If it doesn't sit, I walk away and I sit down in the nearby area, sit down and wait for one minute. If she whines and whimpers, I don't respond at all, and just and don't even start to counter until she stops whining and whimpering. Once she does, and this might be a situation where she whines and whimpers and then stops and, and for 30 seconds you're trying to count to 60 and she gets to 30 and you stop and then she, she whines again and you stop counting. She has to have 60 seconds of no whining before you get up. So let's say she does that. You sit down, make sure you're seated, um, and you sit down and wait for one minute. She gets, uh, and then you get up and go to the door and tell her to sit again. If she doesn't sit within three seconds this time, I walk away and sit down for two minutes. Next time I sit down for four minutes, then for eight minutes. I keep double the length of time until eventually when I say sit, she sits. And as soon as she does, that door flies open. So after a while, we teach the dog that sitting in the door is her way of asking to go outside. 
Now the guardian has also uh, asked me about how to teach her to give her a command to let us know that she needs to go outside. I would probably recommend a bell for that. So most people use the bell and they hang it from the doorknob, which is the worst place, not the worst, but it's not a good place to hang because it confuses the dog. So what I do is I want the dog to associate going outside or for potty. I'm gonna describe it for going outside, but I would recommend you do it for potty, but you might wanna do it just for outside. So what I would do is when she's at the door, I make her sit first when she sits. And remember, if you wanna practice that video, uh, having her stay and wait at the door, practice all the stuff in this video for a month first, and then in Ju end of July, message me and I'll say, how do I get her to stay at the door? I'll sit, show you a video, and that way you can get, stop her from rushing out the door like the problem that you had. I just want you to, to focus on, and you got enough to focus on right now, so me message me in a month, remind me. So it's an easy video, it's easy. But, and that way she'll sit and wait and all the humans go out the door first, and then she go that after. So let's say, uh, but for the bell, what I would do, is I would uh, have her sit at the door and you've already achieved her sitting and waiting. Then I show the dog out of the uh, treat. I roll it right outside the door, right on your deck or down the step. And when she runs out and gets it, when she licks it up, come up with a word that means to go outside. You call it adventure, Disneyland, yard, whatever you want to say. So let's say we say adventure. So we throw the treat out, we say adventure. So after a while, adventure is my command word that I can exit the house and go outside. Now, um, now, if you want to use that as a command word, that, that's what you would say. But what I, if you want to use the bell, what you would do is you have her sit and wait and everybody goes out the door. Then you, let, uh, then you throw the uh, treat outside and when she looks at the treat, you gently ring the bell. Now, mimic how she's going to ring the bell. She's going to ring it, it's going to go da-ding, da-ding. We like to ring it like Durr! and that's not the same sound. So uh, basically, so you roll it out there and when she goes out there, you go da-ding, da-ding. So while the, she's chewing the treat and she's outside, she hears the da-ding. So eventually then you can hang those bells. You do that every time you let her out for maybe about two weeks, and it should be enough. And then at that point, then you hang those jingle bells all over the house, never on a door. So when she wants to go outside, she goes and dingles them, and then you go to the door, make her sit, and then she has to wait, and you open the door, and then you give her the release word, um, uh, which is why I would say adventure. Um, so eventually, jingle means I want to go outside, then you go to the door, and then you tell her to sit and wait. So you're kind of combining a couple things here. That's fine. Um, Remember, anytime she whimpers or whines, ask yourself how long it's been she's been exercised. Wait for the whimpering or whining to end. Then once it does, ask her to do something like sit or lay down. After she does that, then take her outside and you reward her. Then take her outside to play fetch. Come. You're such a good girl. Yes. Try to avoid saying good girl. Just say come or sit or whatever the command word is. Remember, the pronunciation matters as well. So don't say sit. Sit. So I said it two different ways there. And that's how I normally do it. I would say sit. When the dog sits, then I would click if I'm using a clicker. Then I give it a treat and I say the word sit a second time. The most important time to say it is when the dog is doing the action. So I say sit. And then she sits and I pet her and say good girl. Well, good girl doesn't necessarily specific mean sit. So when she sits, you say sit. When she lays down, you say crash or chill or landing or whatever the word is you want to come up with. Um, okay. So um, let me see. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the rules. We, uh, the other rule is not being allowed in the furniture. And just order those X mats at the same, uh, that way you don't have to police it. Same time you do that, throw the treats on the dog bed like I showed you. If you forgot how to do that, message me and I'm happy to send you a video on how to teach your dog to go to the dog bed on command. I would repeat the dog bed on command uh, with going to the actual human bed and condition her to sit at the foot of the bed like I talked to you about. That's the same technique. So if you have questions on it, message me and just use the same technique used for the dog bed, but this time we do it for the actual uh, human bed. Um, all right, so the, no furniture, and these rules should be placed for a minimum of 90 days or as long as the problem's going on. And for dogs that demand bark, the book says two things. No free pets, no furniture. Because the for a dog, the higher they sit, the more rank or social status they have. Now for your fencing, go get that, uh, go to Lowe's and Home Depot. They have that green fencing, it's a square. Yours are like rectangles. So get a square, it's green or black. Put it, the, other, the chain link fence comes up to here. Have the, the other fencing overlapping it so it goes down to here. So you have a little bit of an area where you zip it together so she can't get through it. Now you have like an, essentially an eight foot fence that's going in the areas where she can violate. So that way you know she's safe. The other thing I would do is get that bamboo reed matting, uh, uh, what do you call it, blinds, and then hang it in those sections wherever uh, she likes to go and look at the other things. So that way we're doing that maintenance. So she's blocking, she can't see it. Um, and at the same time, I would also get that white paper from Kinko's or Office Max, measure your window, and just put it in the bottom part of your window. So have her come and stand up at, uh, against the window and see where her head is. So if her head's here, then I have the window, the paper on the window just slightly above. So when she goes to the window to bark at people outside, she doesn't see them leave 
so she doesn't get the validation that will help reduce her barking at the fence as well as barking at, uh, at the street. But again, you can't let her on the furniture because the higher she sits, the more rank, the more she thinks she's the security dog. All right, so um, those are examples of rules and order those expats just makes it a lot easier. Um, we also talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose, I asked the guardian uh, if she nudges or paws for attention. He's like, no. And the next question I asked is, would it be fair to say that she gets petted so much she doesn't have to ask for it? And he's like, yeah. So that's paying the dog. Leaders tell, followers ask. Next time she nudges you or you want to pet her or she wants you to pet her and she's nudging and barking or whatever, instead of doing what she wants, give her a counter order. Tell her to sit. If she's already sitting here. Tell her to sit here or here or to lay down. Don't practice shape confuses dogs. Um, and so basically, if she sits, you pet her under his chin and say the word sit, pet her as much or as little as you want. If she doesn't sit, you show her, I have other things that I can be doing. Playing hard to get works great for training dogs. After a while, she's like, man, if I don't, normally I don't do what they want and that gets them to come and chase me and say it over and over again, I get even more attention. Now they're just on to the next thing. They don't even care. I'm the one missing out. And this will cause you to recognize she can't tell you what to do anymore. She has to ask and better than ask, she has to pay for it. And she'll start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay for that attention. When she does that, make sure you do pet her, otherwise she's gonna go back to nudging or barking or whining. Um, now remember when you pet, try to pet her under here, never pet her on top of her head, that promotes that down nose orientation that insecure dogs do. You pet her anywhere you want, just avoid petting here. Scratch your butt or wherever you want. Uh, all right, so um, uh, use the watchword of paycheck. So if somebody comes in, if I'm petting her, she's standing up. Let's say she came to me, I told her to sit, she sits, I pet her and say sit. Then somebody comes over and I'm petting her while she's standing and they say paycheck. What they're saying is, I suspect you may have forgotten to pet her with a purpose, David. Even if I did it right, I'm not gonna argue. I'm just gonna stop petting her, tell her to sit. If she sits, I pet her on her chin and say sit. I tell the person, actually, I asked her to sit before you came to the room and when you flushed the toilet, she stood up and I continue to pet. But thank you, because I do forget to pet without a purpose. So it's a gentle reminder, it's not a gotcha. But even if you want to pet her, you tell her to sit. If she doesn't sit, you pull back, cross your legs, and show her, I have other things that I could be doing. Uh, again, that playing hard to get works great. If you get in the habit of petting with purpose, every time you pet your dog, it, four important things happen. First of all, it increases the dog's respect for you as a leader, because it's asking versus telling, and it helps it shift into a follower's mindset. Number two, it boosts the dog's self-esteem, because it's earning the affection rather than getting it for no reason. Confident dogs and people are able to brush things off. Insecure people are the ones that are really reactive. So the more confident she is, the better. Um, it also helps you practice sitting and laying down and those basic commands, which is helpful. Um, and it helps her uh, practice listening to you, practice obedience, and also practice those activities. Number four, it makes your pets more valuable. Because if I don't do what the humans want, they're not asking me multiple times. They're onto their own thing, and I'm the one missing out. It truly becomes a gift. Uh, the flip side of that is what I call passive training. Passive training is waiting for the dog to do the things that you want and then recognize and rewarding them within that three second window. So every time she comes to you, pet her and say, come. Every time she sits, pet her and say, sit. Every time she lays down, pet her, play, crash, chill, whatever the words you want to come up for, come up with. Name all of her individual toys. You already did that, but get back to doing it. Every time she brings you a toy, may, pet her and say the name of that individual toy. Eventually you can ask for that toy and she'll go get it. When she takes her, when she drinks water, Say the name of your favorite hot cocktail or favorite bar or favorite uh, adult beverage. And so every time she takes a drink of water, you say Heineken. But eventually you say Heineken, she goes drinks water, your friends are like, is she drinking Heineken? No, it's just a command word, drink. But it makes them smile. Remember, fun command words motivate your dog now as well as the rest of your life. She already has some motivation problems. So all new command words, I'd like you to come up with a funny command words. You could say meatball for eat or food or uh, Slurpee for drinking your water or whatever it is. Um, but come up with these fun command words and come up with a list of the official command words, put them on the fridge or somewhere in the house. And if I'm saying, come here, and the word is come, somebody says vocabulary to me, I'm like, thank you, come. So I'm just going to consolidate using one command word. That can help the dogs learn a hell of a lot faster. Um, so that's petting with a purpose. Uh, and passive training is basically celebrating things the dog does on its own when, I want, when it wants. I guess what I was describing is passive training, which we call celebrating. So if somebody points at me and says celebrate, that means I just missed an opportunity to pet the dog for something that I like. So if, if the dog's standing there and somebody says celebrate, I turn and I start petting and I look at what the dog's doing. Oh, she's standing, I'm gonna pet her and say come. If she's sitting, it's pretty obvious, laying down, it's pretty obvious. So celebrate is just a nice way to check each other and help us get in the habit of doing it. If you get in the habit of doing these two things, petting with the purpose and passive training, she will start offering you those behaviors and stop whining, stop jumping up, stop lunging at the fence and all, all the barking, all the other things you don't want because that doesn't get your attention anymore, but sitting sure does, laying down sure does. 
We also talked about the escalating consequences. I'm not going to go through this on camera because it's one of those things you have to hire me for, but you watch the video above that talks about how to do it. So um, uh, let me see, that's pretty much the extent of it. Make sure you do the maintenance um, for both uh, the fencing here as well as your, uh, your windows. And then basically about three months after uh, you put the, uh, the white paper up, or if she's still barking, you might have to wait a little bit longer. But once she stops barking so much that people come by or people knock at the door, remember every once in a while, knock and then don't go to your door and don't do it when anybody's at your door. So she runs to the door, she's like, somebody's here, somebody's here, somebody's, somebody go in the door? But nobody ever comes up, comes through the door and you don't go and open the door. So that desensitizes her from it. Also, it's another video you probably wanna to go to my website and search for Calm Leash. That'll teach you that technique that we talked about how to keep her, stay calm before the walk when you're leashing her up. Um, all right, now if you have any questions, uh, Kira, come. I use a kissing sound as my affirmation. So you get a dog to sit, I raise it over, arc over the head, and she sits, I lower it, let her lick it off my hand and say sit, and tickle her under her chin. So that becomes part of the reward. Um, ooh, she likes to catch flies. So she when she does that, maybe come up with a word uh, for catching flies. Every time she catches one, uh, you know, get up and pet her and say uh, sentry, or you know, guard dog, or super dog, or whatever the word is. Uh, and so that, that way, again, that's something that she can do that you do like, and now she'll be more motivated to do it, and you'll be fly, fly free for the summer. Sit. Sit. This is my buddy Akira, and these are, this is Akira's roadmap to success. Let's let me take a look at you, Akira. Look what a good looking girl she is. All right, this is Akira's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.